Hello, it's me, Jacob. Uh, I am a fitness coach. I'm gonna be smoking some CBD right now. CBD, it's a CBD joint or like a, it's a big one, it's like a one gram. It's not a joint, right? They call it a blunt or something like that. Sounds so out of it, right? Like, don't even know what to call it. Um, a blunt. Had a good workout today. I've been eating really good in regards to my diet. Um, <laughs> social media, huh? Here we are. Mm. Social media. Here we are. Uh, started with MySpace, right? I felt, I mean, that was kind of the, the start of social media. I wonder, some, you know, most of us were there for that, I think, most of us. I don't think anyone watching this wouldn't be, have been there. I think my audience is typically like 25 and up, like an average. This particular video doesn't have a lot to, there's not a lot of objective. To me, the objective of this video is to release, the release. That's the whole thing. In many ways, like a loaded gun needs to feel a release. That's what I feel. That's what I'm here smoking this one. I've had this for a few weeks, like two, three weeks. I've had a cold brew or uh, yeah, a cold brew coffee today. Train well, ate well. My sleeping was a little off. That could have been better. You know, I've been going to bed late. I need to work on that. I need to work on that. I was doing great with it. And then we had some like uh, fucking electricity through me. And I was doing great, dude. Like, and that's what sucks is it took me so much effort. And then the time change is like. Whenever you set out to do something good, it's been said the universe conspires you to help you achieve it. And at the same time, a lot is against you. A lot is, seems like simultaneously conspiring to work against you, right? That seems to be the human experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, how how grateful I am to have passed as many tests as I've passed. You know, even though it seems trivial that I would say that, even like the standard is like even a standardized test. I'm grateful I was able to pass those to my life. Looking back, looking back, I wonder. You know, I wonder what would have happened if I didn't pass those tests. You know, you don't, as there, when you're a kid going through this process, you know, you're really fending for yourself to a degree with your intel, intelligence, the environment, and like you're at the mercy of adults to a degree and the, their ability to be leaders in their world. You know, I'm a, I'm a product of public education, right? Like, clearly not the only, not solely a product of only public education. I've, I think that 
public education should lead you to your own research, right? Like, if you take a look at most of the stuff in on this channel, right? A lot of it was my research and my desire to design a life that was uh, a good model of leadership, a good model of fitness, a good model of embracing science, and a lot of things that I found were at the core of the good life, right? The quest to have it all, right? That's the whole, that's the whole thing. And so this, this quest to have it all, right? I think that, let's say you were to hear that. Let's say you were to hear, you know, Jacob's was on the quest to have it all, right? I think that if you believe that the world has limits, then you might think that my desire to have it all, my design, my attempts may in some way, in some ways impede on your own attempts to acquire it all. But in reality, that's not true. Uh, you know, much like this little CBD one gram of CBD weed or whatever is isn't just because I'm smoking this one blunt doesn't mean you can't have your own right doesn't mean that at all you can get your own and so in many ways that's how having it all that's a concept like we can we can acquire experiences and resources that allow us to experience this have it all experience without taking from make from not allowing others to also have it all i would say that's step one in going after having it all and if you really look at what having it all is you know we're living in times where, you know, in the United States, people want to get caught up in this gender thing very much. And I think that, I think that for some, it's unfortunate that people that really feel like they're born into another body, let's just say there's you know, I'll give you an example of, of where I'm going with this. Like, I remember I was a server at a restaurant. There was a, there was a man there who was on, in transition. I remember he, he called himself a male name. I remember he would call himself a male name. That's why I'm, I'm saying this isn't about, and so this is back in 2001. And uh, he would call himself a male name and he was going through the hormones and stuff. And with time, I think he said that some time went on and he said, look, I'm not going to do the surgery. It's too expensive or something like that. And I'll just stay a man. And this was already like, he was already older. Like, he was already an older man. Like, I don't know. He was already an older man. He wasn't, like, in his teens. And so that's what... That's a real experience I had. This is before... This is, like, 2001, okay? This is 20 years ago, before this became... The conversation of... Of the... 
month of the year of of the last five years okay this is 20 years ago and my heart goes out to anyone i think that when i think about that person i would say that that's probably somebody who truly had um i could sense the struggle there i could sense this was this person's own just, uh, you know, misalignment with their external body. You know, you could say this person really truly believed they were a woman inside and they needed to, and they were born a male. I mean, at least by behavior, right? And think this is 20 years ago. And I'm telling you, the person later decided to stay a male because he said the surgery was too calm. I don't know. You never going to, I mean, are you ever going to know all the facts as to what happened? But, you know, in today's society, you know, you have where you have this position where people are trying to say that kids can be born. Yeah. There's so much confusion. You can be born a hundred different genders or like six. I don't know who the, to get caught up in that conversation is to me I, I don't feel that sincere conversation I don't feel that sincere conversation and I you know and I remember having a beer with this individual like we had a beer he said hey Jacob I'd like to sit down with you have a beer with you Said, okay and maybe the person just wanted to see how we'd get along or whatever i think he found that i was just a decent individual that was living my life nothing more nothing less right who knows who knows i've had experiences like that i think in my life where people that Let's just say I used to train somebody and she was uh, she was a lesbian or gay, however you... I mean, lesbian sounds so intense, but she was gay. You know, lesbian. So, like, if a guy's gay, he's a gay man, right? <laughs> but he's not... I don't know, lesbian sounds so intense. Um, you gotta wonder where they came up with that word, right? Lesbian. Um, and I remember I was training, I was training somebody years ago, years, 2006, 2006. And I remember this person told me, he said, Jacob, growing up, I didn't see any healthy male role models. A lot of the men I saw growing up were just like rednecks, drunks, etc. I don't know. She kind of just made it seem like there was, maybe she was born around misogyny. That's kind of what I got from her, to be honest with you. And then she said that there was a woman, her college professor kind of helped, I guess, explore being a, a lesbian or a gay person, right? She ended up getting married and I, you know, we, we lost touch or we lost touch. We lost touch. But I could I think about that, the, the situations where gay people have befriended me or worked with me or, or allowed me to be their coach, right? And I think on some level, I've been honored to the degree, and I'm speaking sincerely, like, I've been honored to the degree that I think those that have worked with me that are gay, uh, understand that I am sincerely straight 
And I think that that's part of, I feel that they could see, see that there are some good straight people in the world, right? I mean, I'm sure like their parents are straight, right? Because they came into the world. Oftentimes that's the case, okay? For those. So, I don't know. And I think that this concept of being straight, which is, and, I, and, I, and I'm framing it like that because I think that being straight has come under so much attack. To be honest with you, you know, to be honest with you, I think that being straight has come under so much attack. <sighs> Going back to the objective of this video, the objective to release. I think as I've grown, like as an individual, I, I all done. So, yeah, it's open. Yeah, I just. That would have been funny, right? I should have I should have waited to tell you. You want me to open it or what? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I think that We're just in this real weird culture war at the moment as a society and it's not healthy. I don't see it as healthy. Like we need to allow people the space, sure, to, if they want to, if they sincerely feel that they are gay or they are like this person I met two, 20 years ago, Yeah, if, if you sincerely feel like you need to express yourself in that way or in, in many ways, like I am releasing my position into the world as I speak here, just I understand <laughs> that the whole, the whole thing is not to have it forced on people, right? not to have this propagandized ideas, ideologies, like, okay. You know. It, I, on, on an emotional level, on an emotional level, I, I feel like it's a waste of time to be creating a culture war over this. Like, again, these people that have, let's just say, were transgender 20 years ago. I don't recall people picking on this individual. This is 20 years ago. As a matter of fact, it would just let him be. And I think that that's what we all get. I don't think anybody... You know, we talk about repressing or some people are oppressed and all this stuff, but let's, if we go back 20 years ago, in many cases, a lot of people were already not oppressed. And I think the internet and social media in many ways allowed things to remain
Yeah. Almost done with this. Perhaps that's where, we'll, where we will call it. I wanted to get on here and uh, create a video. Create a video because I haven't been on my YouTube in a while. And, um, you know, I think about how much work I put into all those other videos. And. You know, I'm, I'm honored enough to have been part of that process. Those videos, they had like a, there was a mission, there was a point, you know? And perhaps I could add more videos like this. It's not that I don't have the cameras. It's not that I don't, you know? <laughs> it's not that I can't make them fancy, man. It's that Sometimes you just want the release without the, you know, you want the release without the, how y'all doing? Yeah, you want the release. I, I find myself needing the release without the hype. That's all. You know, I think, like, just the frameworks that I was doing with all those videos. I wouldn't, I don't think I have that in me anymore. I think in many ways, like that part of me is still there, but it's, it's evolved into something else. Like that part of me, hey, my name, hi, my name is Jacob Adams. I'm a fitness and leadership coach. I have people just like you get to the next level. Yeah. I would say that 
never did I feel more like an entrepreneur than at that stage of my life. So from 2016 to 2019, those three years, so 2016, 2017, 2018, in 2019 and then shit hit the fan so hard in 2019 that if you look at my videos after that let's say they were always less coaching there was a significant shift into another another aspect And so I think, you know, and that's the thing with people that like knock entrepreneurship and art and all that shit and the, the purity. Like, I think that people always knock on shit because I don't know. It's, it's very disheartening that like some people might have the audacity to critique my videos in a negative light even though like they came from the heart you know and they're free like the fuck and it, <laughs> like if, if 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 that doesn't let you know the world we live in is kind of fucked It's when people will critique you when you're giving them information for free to help them. <laughs> and so, like, I couldn't be, I'm, I'm prouder of this fucking video. In, in some respects because of its like lack of objective, its lack of endpoints and stuff like that. the main objective was release like yeah maybe if I just have a daily 10 minute video that could be the next piece of art what do I mean by art Like, what I mean is, if you look at the previous 300 videos, if you go into some of the structures, the frameworks were the frameworks is all there. Like, it's pretty evident. There's evident frameworks in all of them, in a lot of, in most of them. What I mean by art then going forward is like there's the desire to move in a less structured manner. There's this desire to move in a less structured manner. 
that's what I mean. And I think that I wouldn't have the liber liberty to feel this if I hadn't done the last 300 videos or the last 400 fucking videos. Like in many ways, all of those things I'm very, they've created value and I know they've impacted people. I, I get the comments on them and you know, I see what works and what doesn't and what's, and I, and the stuff that's fucking stuck, it like really stuck and it really resonated with people, right? What I'm saying is, I feel like a lot of that is, is almost like purged out of me. Like there's no desire for me to continuously say and hammer in on those things, right? Like whether it's, I, I feel in many ways beat up. <laughs> in many ways beat up by the world that I try to give so much to, right? But while some people might say, well, see, you know, no good deed goes unpunished and this and that and blah, 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 blah. Um, what I'm saying is I'm grateful for that. I'm, I'm grateful for the ingratitude of the world. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. It's like a fine dish served to you by the incredulous universal energy of shit or something you know so I'm very grateful that I could feel that level of ingratitude by by the market you know very grateful So what is the art going forward? What is the art going forward? I think the art can be release, to release. If the objective was at one point to evolve, I now want to release the evolution without frameworks, without targets, without objectives, to simply release and see what happens then. There we go. Happy Easter.